Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at For Northwood, a solo trick-taking game. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. I really enjoyed For Northwood when I did a preview of it during its crowdfunding campaign, and now it's got even more bells and whistles like a scenario book. But does solo trick-taking really work? Let's find out and get to the list. <laughs> So my number five point is focused on the victory condition in the game, and there's a bit of a mix for me. The way you score and succeed is overcoming the different fiefs, and uh, if you do that, you just like slide the little people down, and you uh, then score the indicated number of stars. The closer you are to the middle values, the fewer points the fief is worth. But in the end, all you're getting is a score up to 20, so it's not that exciting. It does feel like the kind of real point of the game is to try to go for that perfect score every time, try to get every single fief uh, collected. So it works, it's fine, no major complaints, but it's also not that exciting. <laughs> You're just, you know, trying to catch them all, basically. My number four point, Big Pro, is an inclusion that was added during the crowdfunding campaign. This is called the Noisy Year. And these are a set of 16 little challenge scenarios. And they already change up the game in major ways, give you specific uh, royalty to help you out. They even have an extra, like, challenge for each one to make the game even tougher. So this is awesome. Really adds to the replay of the game. Really changes up the way the game plays. I think this gives the game so much more variety past just a big basic little uh, card game. Excellent inclusion. My number three point, a full-on pro for my taste, is looking at the fief values and how they change up the game around around. So like I said, this is a trick-taking game, and the value of the current fief you're approaching is how many tricks you want to take. And this is just really cool. It reminds me, you know, my, my favorite trick-taking games, like, competitively are things like uh, Hearts and Spades. And, you know, having, like, a zero value here, you don't want to take any tricks. That feels like a shooting the moon. Having a seven, like, you're trying to take everything possible. And the cool thing is you uh, draw your hand first, and then you pick which fief you're going for. So you get to kind of modify your strategy based on what your cards allow. But as fiefs are finished up, after you uh, win or lose them, you get uh, more and more limited in what way you can go. So then it's you might have to use a hand that has a ton of high values to try to get only four tricks. It really changes things up, really makes it exciting. So yeah, just this little like fief mechanic is great. My number two point is also pretty much a pro for my taste, and uh, those are the allies and rulers in the game. So this could just be a basic trick taker with playing card values, but these uh, little rulers change things up majorly because they give you really interesting powers to use as you play, and you have to use them before a given trick plays out, so you never have like perfect information on what's going to happen. So they add a ton to the tactics and strategy of each hand, uh, how you want to use them, and they also add a ton to the variety of the game because you'll have a different set of four to start out each time, uh, based on either the scenario you're playing or uh, just the random draw if you're just playing a one-off. And then as you conquer places, you get these extra rulers you can pull in just on a one-time basis. So like instead of the King of Eyes, I'm going to throw in the Prince of Leaves and they go away. So again, adds more to the choices. That's the only caveat I'll say, though. Uh, usually you get so into kind of the four like main allies you have, at least this is how I tend to play, that uh, I'll kind of get like in a groove and use their abilities in consistently similar ways over and over. And I don't like necessarily pay as much attention to the one-off rulers that I get, except in, you know, certain situations, but that's how it's designed to be. I don't know. <laughs> I still think this is a great mechanic and again, uh, adds a ton of variety to a fun little uh, card game. And then finally, my number one, a big pro is just the core trick-taking play in the game. It's a little different than most trick-takers in that uh, you never have the lead as it were. You always flip a card randomly from the top of the pile and that's the suit you have to play in and you're trying to beat it. Or, you know, if you don't have any of that suit, then you can trump if you have the trump suit, basic trick-taking stuff. But it's streamlined, quick, fun, and really tactical, especially combined with my previous points about the uh, ruler cards and about the different fief values, giving you different things to go for. I just love the core gameplay here. I could play this over and over again for hours. A ton of fun in a nice small package. So overall, I can recommend For Northwood quite strongly if you like trick takers, because this is a pretty genius way to do it solo, and it's a really small box, really inexpensive price. If you like tactical puzzles, lots of variety, interesting play in a short time frame, it hits all those buttons. But on the other hand, if you want a deeper, longer game, this one's pretty quick, pretty breezy. And if you only like trick takers for heavier inter-partner play, like a bidding in spades and stuff, clearly you're not going to find that exact thing here. But if you want to see the game in action, my old uh, preview playthrough is basically identical to the final version of the game so you can go check it out. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.